What's going on YouTube? It's Shin here and I survived a hundred days in a nuclear wasteland. Continuing from our last video, I had survived through a zombie apocalypse and just barely made it out before they dropped nuclear missiles on my surrounding areas. With my old house and bunker gone, I now had to survive in a desolate wasteland in hopes to find shelter, food, and most importantly, any survivors. What will I find? Just gotta keep watching to find out. Let's jump right into it. After the planes pass and the rumbling settle down, I spent a ton of time hitting my obsidian blocks to get out of the little box that I made from the last video. As I climbed down, I noticed my entire base was gone. Traveling through the wasteland, I noticed the only life left was really me and some sheep. For some reason, there's a ton of sheep. But after quickly uh, noticing I needed tools, I needed trees. In the distance, I saw some trees, but it turns out to be some type of dead wood and this would not help at all. I couldn't even create planks from this and this was an issue. After traveling through the night, I wound up near an island that looked to not be touched by the nukes, which had trees, which was a godsend. So I quickly swam over, smashed a few trees, and then made camp on a little island next to it, cooking up some food and making some stone tools. On the morning of day two, I had a little bit of a mission in mind. I, I, I wanted to do some mining. So I went ahead and there was like a little tiny cave right next to where I stayed for the night. And I did a little mining for some resources. I really needed some iron, obviously, some coal for cooking the food, and then some cobblestone. But surfacing, I found some sheep that gave me my wool for my bed, and then I started to build my little house on the island. Obviously, out of cobblestone, we weren't doing anything way too fancy, all right? And then I decided to call it a night. Day three was back down in the mines for some more resources. I wanted a little bit more iron and coal to help sustain what I have going on here for a little bit. And then saw a weird structure in the mountain next door, but also some trees so i boated on over chopped some down and then i just came back on home the next day i went back over to the mountains to check out that weird structure it had a chest in the center with not that much stuff in it but i mean the cows over here were treasure enough so after that i went back home to craft some iron gear and then i set off exploring a tad bit i didn't really go too far i, I just checked out some of the swamps some of the just like i said the surrounding areas and then uh, i went on back to mine down to y level 12 so i can get some other resources and i'm talking diamonds hopefully now on day five it started raining and what a better way to spend a rainy day than to work outside and build an addition to the house so i i, I built a second level for some more space i don't really know what i'm gonna use this space for maybe storage i, I did put a, a couple of utilities up here but I also worked on making a small stone path to the house. I don't, I don't know, to, to give this like island a little bit of life. You know what I'm saying? Day six, today was kind of a good day, but it turned horrible in a matter of minutes. So today's mission originally was to go off and explore a little bit. Uh, I wanted to see if there was anyone else out there. So we head on out and after traveling the wastelands and almost turning back, I found a little watchtower in the distance very briefly. So I went over there. I, I mean, I had to, how could you not? And under this watchtower was like a medic hut and then two other buildings, like military looking buildings. I explored them a little bit and found some TNT and a book that read this. The damn master sergeant came by asking for the wallets from the dead patients. I threw them all away after I stole the money. Never know when I need to barter again. Probably better than bartering with my fingers and organs, I presume. Shortly after that, this is where it turned horrible. I got the notification for a blood moon. And I was out in the middle of nowhere. But I did big brain moves. I climbed the tower to some sort of safety. And then I, I really just waited out the night. I, I wasn't equipped to take on a humongous horde of zombies. 
And also, I thought the nukes took care of this. Not 100% sure, but uh, yeah. As the morning sun came up and the blood moon stopped, just spawning things. I, I hopped down off of the tower in the morning and then I climbed the mountain and I actually found a huge village. But it was like no one was here anymore. I, I guess when the nukes dropped, everyone just got completely obliterated. And it was overrun with zombies. But the first house that I raided actually had a lot of good stuff. Like some potions, some arrows, and even blocks of iron. So this was kind of a... I don't want to say gold mine. Because it was iron. It, anyways. The second house had some okay loot. But it had a book that read this. It's best I leave you here. You have a much better chance at survival this way. This bunker isn't much, but it will protect you from the dead. I've given you a second chance with what little I had. Don't waste it. One more thing, I heard rumors of a bunker once used by a madman. Some say he brought the dead to this land. His fate is unknown. Watch yourself, and I'd steer clear of that place if it even exists. Afterwards, I traveled the village and noticed it was really overrun here but it had potential to be home so i went around destroying monster spawners to make it a little bit more homely and then i just spent the night here i spent day eight looking for a good spot to build a house at then both days eight and nine or for the rest of day eight but including into day nine i spent really construction like a, a pretty tall building but nothing too outrageous but you already know everyone knows my building skills you know I, I i really took this video to try to i need to start working on my building okay i really do but uh it was nothing too outrageous i i was low-key like a little bit of a circular motion and then you know a little bit of stacking on the, the cobblestone but i will have to say i got into texturing a little bit with some andesite and some uh stone that uh, I found along in like the village area for breaking down and also mining too. Uh, now, once I once I finished the first level, I kind of built a second level and started at like the, just the outer ring of it. And then on day ten, all I did was just pick up a couple of chests, that bed that I was using from the other house, and some walls from the nearby road to start like building a wall around the the house to secure my new my new crib if you want to if you want to say a little block high wall will secure it enough today on day 11 i needed to move from my old house to the new house so i made a trip yes i spent a day and i made a trip a little vacation if you will all the way out to the little island to the old house, grabbed my stuff, and then I just, I really just came on back and put it in the chest that I got. Next up, day 12, I ran out of walls on day 10. And that's the reason why, the only reason why I stopped building my walls. So day 12, I went around the area and then I just kind of stole their walls. I mean, there was nobody here except zombies, so they really don't need them. So I stole their walls just to build my walls. <laughs> and I also did a little bit of some texture work on the walls. I say little bit because I merely just found some like mossy cobblestone walls and then just fit them in with the cobblestone, regular cobblestone walls. I was making a lot of progress, but then another blood moon happened, but I felt a lot safer in my house than the watchtower and even my little tiny island house. So things were looking up. Things were really looking up. Day 13, I remembered a tree growing on the island. So when I was chopping down those trees on the other island, I grabbed a sapling for my island and I wanted to grow a tree to start like a tree farm so that way I could start working with some actual wood instead of dead wood because I found live wood. But when I was moving my stuff, I completely forgot to get it. And once again, we're back in the wasteland building this house. So... There's no trees, there's only dead trees. So yeah, I spent day 13 just to travel all the way back to the old house for a tree. 
I don't want to see a comment down there like, oh man, he's just wasting days. No, I, I needed trees, okay? I, I really needed trees. I, I can't work with dead wood. I, I just, I just can't. I will say though, today on day 14 or the next day of day 14, just on day 14 was rather lengthy. So just a heads up, okay? But I wanted to explore what the town had to offer. So I went to that second house that I had found and it had a graveyard behind it. Of course, I dug it up. I mean, how can you not? People always get buried with nice stuff. So dug it up. And I actually found a lot of nice stuff, including a forge sword. Really just a diamond sword, I guess you could enchant a diamond sword. It didn't really say any enchantments on it, but it seems like someone had survived in this area for a hundred days already, but I guess they lost the battles that they had. I mean, I, uh, Someone had to bury these people here. So where did the person go that buried the, all the people? But I will say rest in peace, the Forge family. Okay, sorry, sorry guys. Now, I went to the next building and to the shelter, which it seems they didn't make it either, but they left a book that read, run out of supplies in my shelter, shouldn't have cheaped out on the food and should have bought a higher tier shelter package. You know what they say about hindsight though. Goodbye world. And it had some bones inside of the chest, which was kind of gross, but at the same time, I'm kind of glad for it because there are no skeletons and I need bone meal. So uh, thanks, I guess. <laughs> Next up, I went over to the garden center, which was highly infested of mobs. And I had to deal with all of them because I needed the stuff that was in the garden center if there was anything good in the garden center. And I'm happy that I did because the garden center loot was really not that bad. I mean, some extra tools, a heart of diamond that I have no idea what it even does, a ton of seeds, and look, we got bone meal too. Also, it had a book that read this. Termites are eating at the walls of this place. Leaving the garden center, I went across the bridge to like this little medic tent and I found a little pool of water that actually had healing powers. And then I went home to outline the building a bit then i i just i had it on to bed day 15 i started out the day just farming some trees and then i headed over to the village to do more exploring they had a jail there and on the surface eh, but below it opened up to a lot of cells and a few zombies searching the chest i found a few good things and yet another book that read this this jail literally can't be broken out of so secure you would need like an apocalypse or something to make these doors even open anyways time for my nap after that i figured i'd take the iron bars to also add to my wall back home just to kind of fortify it a little bit more and then i left the jail and started installing those to close out the night but then a blood moon came along and I just, I really just stood at the top of the house waiting for it to pass. Day 16, back out exploring, or so I thought. I just visited this brick house that had a huge mob of zombies under it, took care of those guys and looted the chest, which had basically nothing in it. But I just, I really just went back home to work on my wall and installing the iron bars and such so that way I could finally get this thing finished and fortified and secured because I was, it was, it was horrible looking first off and second off it was just, it was so open anything could walk in. Okay, so on day 16, I wanted to explore, that didn't happen, I worked on a wall. Now on day 17, I pretty much explored a lot of the village, but not a lot of the surrounding area. So for today, I went ahead and did just that. I just picked a direction and traveled that way for a good bit. On my way back, I kind of got lost, but it was kind of a good lost because I found another huge portion of a village but I wanted to head back home before a blood moon happened because it was getting kind of dark out and I'm happy I did because, well, I got one that night and I just stood atop my little house tower thing and waited it out. Today, I wanted to get some XP. So 
for all all my call of duty guys girls people everyone that played some black ops zombies you ever run like a train in kino der toten i kind of did that i i kind of pulled them all into a single file line and it just started i didn't have a, a m14 or nothing like that or a m1 garen or anything like that but as trusty forge sword so i went ahead and i made the trail and i started swiping away and they also got into my compound so i went along the outside walls uh clearing a path so they wouldn't be able to jump over into my compound anymore after all of the the zombie swiping and the zombie killing i noticed that my storage was a little bit cluttered so to close out the day i made a small storage room underneath the house to start having some more storage area now today was the day i wanted to explore that other village so i quickly head on over there and first thing i noticed was this tomb of what is that Matatui? Matatutu? Matatu. I don't really know. I looted the chest, but it really wasn't anything to brag about. Then I went to this hu like huge church looking thing behind it. It had a huge gold throne and some fire pits surrounding it, but off to the left, I found a little entrance to a huge room with an enchanting table and some healing rivers in it. Like that, remember that pool at the medic tent that I found? So now this was the water that was in it just floating down. Upstairs, it had a few more chests with some gold blocks and some other tools in it. Nothing too spectacular. But the, the next place I visited was this huge storage room area that I guess was owned by, who is it, Grandma Kelly? And it had a creepy pit that I had no intention of falling down into. But I will say, some of these chests had some pretty sick loot in it, including sweeping edge swords, enchantment books, a slime in a bucket, and a bunch of other stuff. After checking out all the chests, my inventory was super full, so I just went back home and then I called it a night. Now, day 20, all day today, I worked on that storage room area. I don't know why it took me all day to really work on the storage room area, but it just, it just did, okay? After that trip to the village, I wanted to get that done because I was running out of room. Nothing special just took a while i guess to move everything into specific chests make it a little bit more organized you know you got to put your your special ore founded stuff into the ore founded stuff and then you got to put your wood with your wood and your stone with your stone and then after that i terraformed the compound a little bit and then just went night days 21 and 22. you know it can't be a 100 days series for me if i forget to hit record Shout out to the dude who uh, who called me out on it in my Pokemon video. I appreciate you. This one's for you. <laughs> and I'm quite mad at myself for this one too because I did a lot of exploring today on day 21. But for day 22, I just I did spend the first bit of the day recapping what I did on day 21, which was me going to this first building, which really didn't have much of anything except a chest that said uh homie hides stuff underneath the floorboards so i dug up all of the floorboards as you can see and i found a chest that had a golden pickaxe some iron and then after that i went to this next building which didn't have that much in it either after that i went to this third building that had a gold sword and a chest not that good Lastly, I went to this fourth building that had a secret room. Honestly, it had a it had a chest in it that said that had a book in it that read, "We've looted this already." And I thought it would have been like the one place with the sign that said, "We leave loot underneath floors." So, I dug up the floor a little bit, and then I it turns out it had a secret room, and when you drop down into it, an arrow shot at you out of the dispenser, but the chests Eh, nothing to brag about. So that was day 21. Now on day 22, I did a little bit more exploring in the town and came across this building right here that had a horse, which was freaking awesome, okay? It was so cool. Him and I 
Ah, oh, man. Uh, anyways, but I left them alone until I finished looting the place, which I did leave some of the stuff at that Grandma Kelly's place, but my inventory was too full, and I went back home. I emptied my pockets. I expanded the chest room a little bit more, and I also grabbed some of that blue water stuff to make like a little small pond of it inside my house. Don't know why. I kind of used it maybe like twice after I got it, and then that was, that was really... Day 23, we start off the day with a name tag harry trotter you get it you guess you guess who this is for i go over and i travel back to that one portion of the village to go get one of my best friends through this entire series this horse was so cool he was so cool and his name is harry trotter now okay you get it because he's trotting it's harry potter like you <clears throat> anyways after looting that building and taming Harry, we checked out the surrounding areas uh, where actually we found a hospital and another warehouse looking place, but we, we, we really just went home and then emptied the inventory, farmed some trees, planted some trees, and then we just called it a, called it a night after that. Today, I wanted to do some outlining on the house. So I farmed some trees and then I did just that. Uh, these were spruce trees. So uh, I used some of these spruce trees and merely just the logs. And all I did was just some basic trim work around the edges of the house to hopefully give it a little bit of depth and a little bit of character. But <laughs> I need to watch more. Uh, <laughs> I need to watch more <laughs> building tutorials because this ain't it, chief. <laughs> it's really not it uh because it also it also took me a long time to just get it right i mean you gotta have the trims facing a certain way so everything flows together it, yeah anyways let's just move on so i grabbed harry mr mr trotter and i set off on day 25 to go explore those last two buildings first up the hospital Honestly, this it was really beautiful inside with these marble-like floors and the complimentary shaders really did it justice as well with all the, the glossiness of the floors, but there was also blood everywhere and, and a few chests scattered in the rooms upstairs, but it, it really wasn't anything special. I then headed up to the roof and up there was a chest that had some like regen potions, which was actually really cool. Almost... It was almost as if there was, there was like either their storage or maybe like a loot drop for the hospital. But I climbed back down and it was onto the next building, which had an entry gate to get in. So it leads me to believe that this building was once like a secret access type of building, like a, a I guess a research building maybe. But the entry gate was kind of broken down and I just kind of walked in. But in the middle of the floor was kind of a cool looking car, which once again, it kind of leads me to believe this was kind of some uh, executive building. I mean, big executive buildings usually have fancy looking cars in the middle of their floors, do they not? But uh, going upstairs, there was a few zombies and in the chest was a potion of regeneration and some spawn zombie eggs. So, was this a facility that was spawning these things? Is this where the virus started? Because I really don't know. I don't know who knows. But after that, I went down, I grabbed Mr. Trotter, and then I just went back home. All day the next day, Harry and I just traveled the surrounding area. I wanted to explore. I wanted to get out there. I wanted to find, to, to see if there was really anything out there. And it was definitely a lot faster than on foot, but it definitely proved there was absolutely nothing and no one around the area anymore. The nukes had definitely wiped everything out here. But after a brief stop checking out like a sunken forklift area, Harry and I just, we just headed on back home uh, with, with no luck in finding anything. Then on, and then on day 27, Harry and I, we, we set off to go explore again. And while exploring, we found these towers of some sort. 
It turned out to be kind of like a fenced in area with a ton of zombies locked up. Breaking into the fenced in area, I read these signs that said, if you can read, you're too close and leave the perimeter immediately, blah, blah. But I was not buying that at all. I mean, I learned that lesson very quickly with the chest with the book that said, we looted this already. Nah, fam, I I'm going in, okay? And I'm happy that I did because I broke down the wall to find a staircase that led down to a little hallway and a trap door. I guess this was an escape tunnel, maybe. And I just kind of took the wrong entrance, but climbing up, it was actually a room. And on the wall, that had a book that read, there's shambling creatures escape. I had to drop my research. No matter, I open the doors of the bunker and this horde will surely find its way to that village. It's what's little payback I can get for being cast out. I, the great Michael, shall always get the last laugh. I was also trapped between two rooms of zombies, but I kind of big brained it a little bit. I tunneled above one of the rooms, dealt with all the zombies, and then I dropped down into the room. There was a light switch that kind of turned on some glowstone, but moving past all of that this turns out that this was some sort of research lab for a guy who wanted revenge on the village from the way over from like the other village i guess so maybe this is where it started the whole the whole mustard virus thing and it kind of got out of hand and then maybe the warehouse took some of the eggs that maybe the zombies were dropping to spawn to research them i have no clue or the warehouse might have started it it got out of control the guy found anyways i took all of the books i took whatever loot that i found i killed all the zombies even these like two little guys that were they were name tag promising specimen and then after all of that i, I left went home today was a great day to go farming I hadn't had a blood moon in a while, and it felt like the right thing to do. So, I picked the plot, went over, started hoeing around. <laughs> you get it? Oh, okay. And then after that, I wanted to make some pathing over to the farm from the house to kind of give the land a little bit of life. And that was, that was, that was the end of day 28. On the days of 29 and 30, I needed to develop a mine shaft because without resources, I'm a broke man. And being a broke man, you become a dead man. So being the broke man that I already was, I hobbled on over to a nearby hill and just started digging away down to Y12. And on day 30, I made some stairs, got those installed and started spot mining. When I saw a resource, I got it. I saw an ore, I got it. Redstone, iron, coal, uh, anything and everything that I saw, I got it. But I still didn't find any diamonds, okay? Finally, on day 31, I made a small bridge so I didn't have to float over the swamp all the time. Using some spruce planks and also some cobblestone brick wall definitely gave it a little bit of character. And then I also made the entrance to the mine shaft a little bit better than just a hole in the hill with some spruce logs here and there and then some of those cobblestone walls. Day 32, I will admit, I forgot to record the beginning of the day. But honestly, Harry and I just went out to go get some sand. The purpose of that was for my glass roof. So I needed sand, and we went over there. I did get a little bit of sand, but then I got distracted. Lagundo, if you ever watch this, Shadow Mac, I know you saw my last video. This is me coming out of that fourth dimension and talking to you guys. Lagundo, I found one. I found a pink sheep, okay? I got distracted, okay? So on uh, the rest of day 32, you already know what I have to do. We went all the way back home. I dropped Harry Trotter off. I grabbed a lead and even in the night, I grabbed the pink sheep. Blood Moon or not, we were getting this dude home, so I grabbed the pink sheep and we walked all the way back to the house. And now I have pink sheep. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw this. Today, all I did was hit the mines and go strip mining. Nothing too special. I found diamonds though, so that was awesome. I mean, sort of. Is it just me or like, do finding diamonds just not hit like it used to? Don't get me wrong, I still get excited. Ooh, diamonds, yeah, sweet, ooh. But 
I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's just me. It's just not the same anymore. But yeah, strip mining for day 33, that's all I did. And then on day 34, I just worked on the glass roof. I wanted to finally finish this house project. Even though it looks horrible, I just wanted it done. And it did get done. And now I have a glass roof that looks so, <laughs> it looks so ugly. <laughs> It's not the prettiest thing, but it works. No mob spawn on it. No mob spawn near it. Nothing. It works. Okay. It's a roof. Keeps me dry. The very next day, I went over to that like church place because I wanted their books and their enchantment table. And I brought it all back. I made some spruce bookshelves and enchanted a lot of iron hammers because I know I needed to survive for this series and I know I needed a lot of materials for it. Also, some people say this is wasting your diamonds. I do not. I crafted a diamond hoe and it was worth it. Okay, because this hoe actually lasted me all the way to the end of the series, believe it or not. Don't believe me? Then you gotta watch until the end, all right? Anyways, days 36 through 39, I hit the mines for a full three days, just mining straight lines with those hammers. I was finding resources, I was finding dungeons with these insanely fast zombies why i don't know what mod these came from i don't know what what config i had to adjust or if i needed to adjust i didn't really adjust anything but why are these a thing they're so fast and they're so annoying but i'm happy there was only a couple of them and I got so many blocks. I got so many iron. I mean, I got a lot of stone, a lot of cobblestone. I got a lot of iron and a lot of coal. I was pretty much set for a, a while. But now moving on towards day 40, I had spent so much time in the mines and it was time to set out on an adventure. And I know that Harry was pretty bored too. Also, Today, I started off the day with naming the pink sheep Meat Buster. I don't know why. It was just, it's Buster, okay? <laughs> okay. But I grabbed some food and I also decked out Harry in this diamond horse armor that I found. I know. She, like, and then we head off. No real direction in plan, just picked one way and we headed there. We, we did come across this island and it actually had a pretty cool house in the middle of the woods. So I investigated it, but it was, it was very abandoned. Like the chest had only cobwebs and rotten flesh in it, but right next to it looked to be a barbecue looking place. I don't know. Maybe it was like a cookout hangout place with a dude. I, I don't know what you call it, but once again, no good loot. I, so I just spent the night at the abandoned house. Harry and I set out the next day traveling a lot of land and we came across a pirate ship nobody on it but it had some cool stuff on board and then we just kept on riding on after that no once again no real set destination just took my horse on an old back road or old town road I, I don't know what it's called anyways let's move on to the next day <laughs> And on the next day, we, uh, 42, it was just time to head on back home. But along the way, I found an abandoned mine shaft that actually had some pretty nice wood. I'm not gonna lie, it was, it was pretty minty fresh. But after that, we just headed on back home to call an end to our adventure. Today, 43, I farmed some trees. And while I'm doing this, let me just say something. The entire purpose of traveling over the past couple of days was to honestly just find any form of civilization, whether it was villages or anyone alive. And the fact that I saw that one house was pretty cool. It kind of gave me hope that, I mean, honestly, the entire island, for some reason, the sheep lived through the nuke. I really don't know how or why, but the sheep lived through the nuke. But finding that one island with all the trees and vegetation on it was pretty cool but I couldn't find anyone. So now my ultimate goal for the end of this series or for this series, for this survival, I'm going to make my own village. 
starting off with some houses, then a wall, maybe a welcome center or two, and then farm with crops and animal pens so we can get civilization back. So now I, I finished getting those trees, stock my inventory with cobblestone to begin production on the next day. These next couple of days actually went by really, really, really fast. It's kind of crazy how when you actually put a plan in motion and then you calm my ADHD mind with a set plan and do it step by step. But day 44, we begin laying out the outlines of the different houses, different sizes, different shapes. Really don't know who is going to live here or what they'll do at the moment, but we'll figure that uh, that out down the, down the road. Also, on the big hill, I wanted one of those welcome centers at least that could be seen from far away. So when someone sees it, they're like, oh wow, it's civilization. Let's go check this out. Now on day 45, we begin laying the floors for all of the houses. I use spruce planks so that it can prevent mob spawning inside the houses to be as safe as possible. And I just went around to every single one of the houses with these, these this flooring. The next day, I built the staircase to the big welcome center and a nice wall that surrounded the stairs. And then I did the flooring for inside the big place for at least the bulk majority of it. Um, I, I ran out of some spruce planks so i know i had to i had to farm some trees for that i began building the huge wall around the entire village it was necessary to protect who was living in here so for now we were doing cobblestone walls and then later on i'll add some uh i was hoping to grab some iron bars and then i'll add them to the wall to kind of fortify it a little bit more i also should have started with the wall to kind of fortify it before I started laying the houses, but I'm kind of happy I did this last because it gave me as much room as possible that I needed to build a few of these houses. Days 49 and 50, surprisingly enough, surprisingly enough, as I mentioned before, I was able to maintain such a strict dedication to this huge project if I split the big project into smaller projects. So like we first started with the outlines, then we I started with the, with the spruce plank flooring, and then I went to do the welcome center and then the, the walls. So now for days 49 and 50, I worked on pathing little roadways to each of the houses connecting them all, as well as my house. And then it led all the way to the mine shaft, which I also had to restock a lot of stone and cobblestone to start building the walls to the actual houses. So that was actually, uh, it kind of worked out perfectly. So now days 51 through 53, getting into the walls of the houses, this was kind of difficult since I had to think of layouts of windows, layouts of the actual houses, also texturing the walls. So it took a little bit longer than I wanted to. So main base was obviously cobblestone. And then I trickled in a little bit of stone as well as some andesite here and there on a few other houses. But in the end, we got it all done with all of the walls being built. Some of the houses actually have some funky looking window designs, which was okay because it helped me determine who and what was going to go where, whether it was a farmer, nitwit, unemployed, cleric, bank, you know, anyone and everyone had a kind of sort of a dedicated place when I was building these houses, but nothing was really set in stone. <laughs> you get it? It's making cobblestone. Anyway, today was spent trimming the houses with what wood that I had. I began with some obvious tree farming, and then I had to think about what the outside of the houses were to look like and make sure that not every single house looked the same. I, I kind of got to keep it diverse, you know, because if everything kind of looks the same, it kind of looks like those neighborhoods that are like quickly built up and they just all the houses look the same like in those movies. But a lot of these houses actually really came out nice with the contrast of the spruce and the cobblestone. So I was pretty happy. Days 55 through 64, you, you should have already seen it coming, okay? This chunk of time, I will never get back. This was the most headache driven, most horrible experience. Literally just roofs, roofs roofing roofing however you want to say the bane of my existence that's what we're gonna call it and i had to put one on all of these houses 
you know, I didn't really think like think it through when I was like, let's build a village. And the texture of the walls and the spaces in between for the windows and the flooring and the roofing and the spaces and the roof where it meets at the peak and the overhangs and the textures and this, this part sucked, dude. It sucked so much, but eventually it got done. I was using spruce stairs for all of them with spruce planks for that peak space. In some buildings, I used cobblestone bricks to fill in that little middle row up top. In some houses, I just used spruce trap doors to fill in that space. And down below, I might have used some spruce trap doors to kind of give a texture to the, to give the houses a little bit more contrast, but some roofs were triangles and some were just round. And yeah, nine days for roofs in freaking sane i am never again never again but i want today on day 65 was a super easy day it was it was just glass and doors so doing those cool designs before it, it actually really made it look pretty cool i'm not gonna lie i was putting in the glass and for the doors i used some oak doors that were super easy to get and also made the front pop out a little bit more but I soon ran out of glass and I I just, I moved on to the next project. 66 and 67, today I started building the welcome center with all of the walls, the foundation, I finished the floor out and then doing the roof, but then I ran out of stairs, thankfully. But on day 67, I just hopped down and started some other things that I knew I had blocks for, like some little lights around the path area to give it a little bit of glow up when you walk around at night. It also added a little bit of character to the village. Now on day 68, I finished the roof on the first welcome center, which when you stand up here, as much as I kind of made fun of myself for days 55 through 64 about, you know, doing all the roofs, it looks so freaking cool like to think of doing this big of a project and to other people who do building all the time i know it's not that big of a project but this is the biggest project that i have done in a 100 days video or i i really like to think that this is probably one of the biggest projects that i have done in a while anyways it, it was it was pretty cool i then moved on to the next welcome center now these things aren't really that special, but it's just a pass through to get into the community. You know, it's kind of like a, let's check out who you are. If you have any symptoms, blah, 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 blah. But towards the end of the night, they got finished and on to the next phase of the project. The next four days I spent making the farming area because I didn't really want people showing up and there'd be absolutely no food. That's kind of bogus, right? You, you get done traveling, mans get tired, mans get hungry, man needs sleep. So they need food too. So farming, I basically had to terraform the area into looking like cascading mini hills to be able to till up. And then I place the water sources and then plant all the seeds. I did simple farms, nothing too crazy. We're just talking wheat, carrots, and some potatoes. Carried away in the day 71 and 72, I also made like a little bit of a pond for people to just hang around. I didn't texture it out much, but I mean, it's, it's a pond, okay? So now, with all the walls up, the roofs up, I need sand to make glass to finish all of these windows. So, Mr. Trotter and I traveled out to the one place that I got distracted at and just basically mined out this entire cove for all of its, all of its sand. I mean, all of it. And I didn't see another pink sheep, so yeah, unfortunately, once we got the sand, we just went back home. The next day, I put the sand I got on day 73, and now on day 74, I started to make the pens for the animals. You gotta have the wools and the meats, you know? And before anyone says anything, I did make a pen for chickens, okay? I had the cows, I had the sheep, I had the pigs pen now. I wanted the chickens because I knew for some reason I was going to need a chicken. And I will include the chickens in this one. Using spruce fencing to match the way the village theme was and slapping some torches on the ends, I have to say the pins, I mean, you can't really go way too extravagant. Or, well, I mean, you can make a barn, but we weren't going with that. We just needed some basic. Today was a light work day. I just went around the place making those uh, makeshift lamps all around the village. It was a lot darker in some areas and 
I, I didn't want mobs to spawn all over the place. So until I ran out of spruce wood, I, I continued putting these guys up and then I checked on the sand and I got the glass and got to work finishing up my windows until dark. Now, this day I mainly focused on getting all of the windows finished and uh, also the spruce saplings I, I forgot to mention had now started growing into trees so I kind of textured the area a little bit with some spruce saplings so that way well they can look like this okay it, it added so much depth to the village but anyways glass windows done today done and to close out the day I made a lot of beds for all of the houses in the welcome center for when people come in, they can sleep. Continuing on to the the next phase of the village project, I, I did a, some menial tasks. I mean, laying the beds down in the houses, then putting up some iron doors and buttons for the main entrances. Then I also did some farming to keep the farms going and producing food because I, I wanted to actually fill out the fields rather than just have them like, okay, yeah, you have two carrots, good luck, you know? So now the village was so close to being done. All it needed was some minor details to truly pull it together. Also, can, can we kind of take a moment for me and to say that like, I'm really proud of the fact that I had a goal and I broke it into little baby steps and step by step, I followed it. If you watched my previous video, I had 15 half done projects, okay? <laughs> and it was just pure chaos. But after all of this, I'm super happy that I was able to create a goal and then follow it through. But anyways, I started going around laying some boulders, some makeshift rocks and some buttons for like little pebbles around the area to give it that little extra bump in character. And uh, we were we were close to being done with this. Now the boulders were in, the houses were built, the fields were tilled. I need animals. So today I'm focusing on animals. And right outside one of the welcome centers off to the right, there was a ton of sheep. So all day, sheepies were following me back to their new home. Not a rolling hill, not, not some extravagant mansion, but spruce. And I mean, this is top of the line spruce fencing, okay? I farmed this and built it myself, all right? So they better appreciate it to, to an extent, I, I hope. Now, after working on the village for the past, like, what, what are we on? We're on day 80-ish? For the past, like, 30 days. I wanted to go, like, kind of get out and explore a bit. So I grabbed Harry and we just went south for a bit. Uh, we, we didn't, once again, we didn't find anything in the wasteland, but then we curved around and went northeast. Didn't find anything either. And then we went out west a little bit before heading home. Still didn't find anything. But in the evening time of day 82, I just planted more seeds to get the farms growing even more and uh, did a little bit of farming. Um, but yeah, I mean, nothing. There's still nobody out there. Over the next couple of days, I hit the mines looking for iron because I need that for the wall border to further fortify it a bit more. A little bit uninviting when you come across a compound with iron bars, but in the middle of a nuclear holocaust, in the middle of a zombie apocalypse, a nuclear wasteland, whatever, we need fortification. So I, once again, I went mining for the next couple of days. I found a bit of iron, including the stuff I had at the house and down here from before. But after mining for a while into day 84, I started putting up the bars, ran out of bars, went back mining, and finally completed the iron work on day 85. As I've been walking around, I noticed the house I built on the edge of the pre-existing pond looked kind of trap so i made a mini boat dock and now this is the fisherman's hut so using more spruce slabs and i made a little tiny like outside storage place it turned out okay it's not perfect but it will do in the in the time of an apocalypse okay we can't be really picky all right we got a place to put the fish that we fish i mean really so day 87 i had the intention of getting more animals for the farm but I got distracted by something I searched up. So 
all around the field surrounding the house so not all around but every so often i would notice these like daisies and a perfect or like sort of a perfect circle here you ever you guys ever notice these so i found out that if you mine down a little bit you will find diamond or emerald ore inside the circle a little bit of lore for you or you know history uh in Celtic, I believe I'm saying that right, Celtic or Celtic lore, various a circle of usually mushrooms, but sometimes flowers would indicate a gathering point for fairies or pixies. It's called either a fairy circle or a pixie ring. So the fairies and pixies would actually gather and each sit on their own flower. If you crush one of the flowers, you would be haunted by a fairy forever. If you walked into a fairy circle, you had to say sorry for interrupting the gathering and walk out the way you came. If you walked through without noticing, it was just bad luck. So yeah, uh, a little bit of, I guess, history or lore or whatever that if you guys care to listen to that. But also to close out the day, I got one chicken. And I brought it back home. That's that's all I found out there was one chicken at the moment. And now today was the day I was going to complete the farm. Back out, no distractions. I found two cows and a pig to start off with. Then I found another pig towards the evening time. And finally, my farm was complete. The next two days, I did some quality of life stuff like farming a bit. I bred the animals. I also made some signs to label some of the houses to kind of like to say who lived here. Now that the houses were built, I could kind of signify like this is the butcher's house. This is the farmer's house. This is the clerics, the banks, the fisherman's house. I think you get it. Okay. So I started to think that no one was really going to find this place. Almost 40 days in and no one came by. So I was like, maybe I should build like a huge structure that leads them to it. So I took all the stone that I had and I constructed a huge sign. The sign said safe. <laughs> and after I built it, I really started to remember uh, the show Walking Dead. You know, the zombie show um, where in in the show i think it's later in the season spoiler alert they found a safe haven quote unquote and turns out the people at the safe haven eat other people i didn't really think this through but i i still left it up regardless it was something to bring attraction to the place so it, it's it's staying the last final well i wouldn't say final because it could always be improved but the last little detail i wanted to put on this place was the road the pathing was great, but it really lacked character. So I took it upon myself and I made up some cobblestone like brick slabs. And then I started to go around the edges and lining up the path. I made a few stacks here and there and where my light posts were, I surrounded those with like kind of a tiny foundation. I went along both sides of the path to be consistent with it and to close out day 94 by just soaking everything. The, the night sky looked amazing also no blood moons in almost 50 days i feel like these things have kind of phased out by now which was great we're still dealing with zombies but i didn't feel like dealing with hordes of zombies so i guess you could say life was good life was good starting off day 95 i farmed for quite a bit not just crops but also the spruce tree farm i had going on then i got to thinking I really need to, to spread out my reach on, there is a safe place here. So I went back home, I crafted a ton of signs, then I began to head out and place them kind of everywhere saying safe 260 19 and hopefully people will see it and head that way. For those who don't know that the 260 19 are the coordinates that lead back to the house. So yeah, I mean, hopefully they'll see it. Maybe they've been following the same court. If not, then we're all totally screwed. I'm not gonna lie, we're, it's, that's, that's it, we're, it's over. <laughs> Days 96 through 98, I went and took this exploration to a, a just a farther reach. I went all over the lands over the next couple of days, laying down signs, laying down markers, just spreading the word that there's a safe place to come to these, at these like coordinates and by the day, End of day 98, I, I went back home to 
no one there still, but it was still early. I had just laid those signs down and it'll take some time, of course. I mean, this is this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. So it's gonna take some time, it will. And I'm sure people will see them and either be very wary and cautious and nervous and never come, or I might get the straggler, like maybe one or two. All right, if you did watch my previous video on day 99, I wanted one thing and one thing only. I wanted a cake to celebrate the 100 day survival. So what I did was make it a little platform at the entrance of the Welcome Center. I then got some milk, I got some sugar, I got some wheat, and last thing I needed was a chicken egg. So I waited, and I waited, and I waited until I heard that and it was there. My cake awaits me. Dude, I jumped with joy after I made it. Then I placed my cake and just jumped with joy on the little platform. I, after jumping up so much, I, I, I mean, I was kind of wasting my hunger bar a little bit because it's full, but I soon ate my first slice of that delicious cake. And then I waited for humanity to arrive. I waited all day and watch the sun go down and then I just turned inside and went to bed. Yeah, no one showed up except one dude, but he's really not the type of person I want in the compound since he likes to kind of like eat other people. So I thought maybe I should go further. I mean, I built the thing here. I laid signs. I did what I could. So you ever know like billboards only reach but so far, but the word of mouth travels forever. So um, maybe you've never heard that before because I, I, I'm, I literally just made it up, but I, <laughs> I, I, maybe I should just travel, travel more. And that's what I did. Although with a twist, I grabbed Harry and I traveled all the way in the evening to an island that had a huge ocean. I placed a fence down, attached the lead, and I placed a sign that said, this is my horse, Harry. Take him back to 26019 and take care of him. I looked up at him. He neighed right back and I said my goodbyes to him. Honestly, my best friend through this entire 100 days. My best friend, Harry. I got in a boat, took one final look back at, at, this, at this island, and I then hit the ocean in search of humanity. So, if you have made it this far, guys, I just, I, I truly want to say thank you so much for giving all of my videos a chance. Really, from the bottom of my heart, I truly appreciate it. Doesn't matter if I have, you know, 600,000, 6 million subs, 2,000, 3,000, whatever. I appreciate you giving the video at least a chance. I also want to say thank you so much for all of the support from everybody who has been here either since day one, since day 60 since day 100 whatever i just thank you everyone i truly mean it from the bottom of my heart now as a treat like i like to do for some of my videos i got a little sneak peek to the next video as to what's going to come down what's going to happen also you'll notice that in the description of this video i made a discord so if you do want to join uh go ahead and click the link and then go ahead and just read the rules and everything and then you can join the discord also secondly i didn't really uh promote it all that much but i have established a patreon it's also down in the description below and also while you're down there go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button if you truly enjoyed the video and leave a comment about uh, you know what your favorite part was or maybe a little bit of speculation as to what the next video is going to be but anyways once again guys thank you so much for everything all of the support i truly truly appreciate it also stay tuned for a new hardcore 
uh, series that I, I know I've been talking about it for forever. Stay tuned for this trailer for the next video. I hope you all stay safe out there and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you again. Goodbye.